snappy and they could have avoided almost all of that. But I think, I think Virtus probably just rattled in this first half. I'm not even sure why. Sounds we like are going to go. Yeah, it, I mean, they really do. We are going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back after the second half. Stay with us. Right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here it's the second half, and we have got Virtus Pro versus Heroic that you're seeing on your screen here. And now it's Virtus Pro instead. Just don't say that. But yes, um, very, very good job from Heroic. I mean, I don't want to steal anything away from them. I do think Virtus Pro are in an awkward place, but yeah. Heroic have looked like a really good team for a very long time. Um, even before they picked up Nico and Yugi, they were looking kind of exciting in S tag as well. Like they, they've had sort of a, a core thing going on even that team looked good i think even when they had you know freeze and stuff they were looking like pot potentially promising team yeah now they've picked up uh young talent and this is this is just i think an interesting adventure uh heroic because they're sort of the third best team in denmark at some point but actually if you look at the gap between these guys and something like north it actually doesn't seem to be all that much um, not at all like no. i would even wonder in a best of one what would happen if you put heroic versus astralis that could be a really interesting game um, because it's so it's so crazy when you've got these best of one uh, situations for versus pro things are looking very bad they are three rounds away from being knocked out of this tournament yep there's it's no other way to put it nothing has worked for them they have tried to throw some interesting strats out there but when it comes to actually taking the fights they haven't had any luck whatsoever no skill no luck nothing working for them the only times where they look like they've got a chance is when snacks is clever enough to get them backstabbed to backstab heroic right and actually catch people unawares but if it turns into a straight up fight where you need to get the entry kill we just didn't see that at all for Virtus pro in this t side they were losing duels left and right and well i mean that speaks to the individual level here from heroic just showing up and getting multi-kills round after round. And so now we're going into the pistol round here for the second half. Countdown has begun, and I'm looking to see what kind of utility we have, because Virtus.pro also blew our minds with that pistol. They had four players running full utility, which was nuts. 
Here, it's a bit more what we're used to seeing. Heroic, it's only Snappy who's gone ahead and invested in the nades. Well, let's see how this unfolds. There is a pretty big stack on the B-bomb site. Only Snacks is lurking alone on the other side of the map. Versus Pro have the manpower they need to hold this drop and plateau crunch that should be coming in. Pasha in a good corner here. They don't have a Molotov in the pistol to clear him out. He's going to take Aztag, setting up for more headshots. Long range, they're just being funneled in near with the kill, and they get shot down immediately. Not this round, Heroic. Mavertus Pro back with a pistol round. That's big news. You're kind, of, you're kind of sad at that point if you're Heroic coming out of drop, if you have one flash. Yeah. It's just like, well, this one flash is going to have to be so magnificent that there is no place to hide from it, because otherwise we're going to get one tapped, and sure enough, I mean, Pasha played it cleverly as well, hiding from the rest of Plateau. There was just no chance there for Heroic and the pistol. And now we have to see, you know, will VP continue this trend that we've been seeing at this event of teams being able to lock down that second round after the pistol. So that's exactly what VP need right now. They are looking for the money as well. Look at this. Nothing but economy boosters on their side. Two MP9s, two UMPs, and a Swag 7. Careful now, Snacks. Don't want to give them the advantage. Although... This is something that's worth pointing out. Snax is sort of a specialist at playing this whole A-long area. He's incredibly mm -hmm. good. We've seen it with pretty much every weapon. I think even notoriously the Mag-7 has been lethal in this position. So I would actually say, if, if I was heroic, I would seriously consider not even going there. Just leave Snax alone and, and fight elsewhere on the map. Yeah, go Ooh. for an explosive kind of run onto the B, uh, onto B site before the anti-rush nades really get into play for Virtus Pro. They have to be careful here, though, with all these SMGs, man. VP are going to funnel, exactly. <laughs> There's going to farm money, and Bialy finds the headshot on Mahdi. Snacks, one big spray, gets the second one as well. Yep, sure enough, and that's the bomb delivered to his feet. The rest of Heroic are just going to try and spring on this, see if they can't find a kill somewhere, and sure enough, they do. Two kills, in fact. But still, the damage is done, and Pasha, you don't want to give Pasha a kill right now. Boom! Snappy! What that's a huge one! Is happening right now. This... I mean, they're in drop. They can't really get out. Why are you jumping in to fight them? Now it's a two-on-two, -two and admittedly, Heroic have almost no health, and they also don't have the bomb, so they should still be pretty straightforward in terms of Virtus Pro winning the round, but that, oh. uh, you know, you, you want this round to be building a tiny bit of confidence, right? You want to come out and say, listen, it's all fine. We're going to make the full comeback, and now you lose three players to just pistols. Taz is going to get the last two in, but... That's kind of unacceptable from Virtus Pro's point of view. Just getting, uh, getting a bit aggressive there. But Bialy's grinning, and I think as far as uh, VP are concerned, if Bialy's got a smile on his face, things can be looking up. He hasn't yeah, exactly had a terrific first half, and they do rely on him to get the headshots. Is it like a, uh, you know, good moods kind of grin, or I'm losing my sanity, you know? Like, I'm not sure. It looked like a chuckle, you know, it looked like a, a good mood. I mean, definitely, you would have lost it already, but at least you got the start. Oh, that's okay. better. And no armor, so Snacks will go down, but he got a couple of kills in. Again, without the armor for Heroic, this should not be much of a fight at all. Might, I mean, should be a 13-5 scenario here. It's absolutely possible for Vodasro to make the comeback, and especially because they have, you know, the double up capability if they need it. Yeah. That could be interesting. Uh, there's plenty of options here for VP on the CT side. I'm going to be very curious to see how heroic approach the 19th round when they're able to buy. What is going to be the call? And Pasha, once again, getting overwhelmed. Not a single kill for him. He hasn't made that shotgun work in two rounds running versus anti-ecos. That's frustrating if you're Pasha. And we're into a three-on-three three now. Shotgun on Nico, MP9, and Snappy's going to be the one picking up the Tech-9. So let's see, can they just overwhelm? They need to just overwhelm somebody quickly here on VP, get onto the site and get the plant. And we'll see if it's possible. Snappy. Taking the lead, and he's going to run right into Taz. Taz, one of his favorite spots on the map. Likes to hold outside a connector. Usually does manage to pick up those kills. And sure enough, a very solid recovery there for VP in the end. I would seriously consider doing a tactical timeout with Horace Virtus Pro right now. I, I, everything rides on this. They've got the double up. They've got everything. Like, I would really try and take a deep breath because this is... Yeah, if they can't win this round, then Heroic have the money, they start to get close to, to winning the whole thing, you're going to be economically destroyed as well because you've been losing too many rifles in the previous rounds. A lot is on this round, just they have to get this right. There's no other way to put it. They've got Snacks playing alone over here with the AWP, which 
normally I wouldn't be a fan of. If you've got the AWP on long, you should have someone with you with a rifle that can save you. But it is Snacks, and he does have an uncanny ability to just find kills and escape. So maybe we can allow for a bit of uh, leniency here. He's going to be going back towards long. He could be sandwiched in. Oh, this is very dangerous. That smoke? No, not going to respect it. Nico, that's such smart play. Instantly takes the kill. That's very heads up. Perfect timing. Taz is still here, and they've managed to push in the meantime all the way up to Connector. Madi clotheslining Bialy, and Nico finding a kill of his own. Takes down Taz. That's the A site open for business, but it doesn't even matter. Madi is wrecking house. Nearly picks up the third kill. A flawless round here for Heroic. A complete and utter collapse on the defense for VP. And while this is a disaster for VP, they were looking so good to actually come back into this, but now this means Heroic are going to be up on 14 rounds. Yeah, and even worse is the economy from Versus Pro's point of view. They've got f almost 5,000 on Bialy, and everybody else is more or less sub 2,000. So, oh, what a what a heartbreaking situation. And from Snack's point of view, he sees a guy in middle, just as he unscopes. He can't get that kill. Then he decides to go back long to throw that smoke. I mean, it's one thing that Nico pushed through, but even then, the guy in middle that he saw the first time could have been up the stairwell, like the danger stairs at that point in time. He could have. Just snuffed him there. That's such a big risk and for very little reward. All that smoke would have done potentially is bought 15 seconds where they couldn't push through and then, mm -hmm. you know, they would have been there anyway. So, man, this is uh, not looking like the Virtus Pro that we all love to see and one that could maybe make it to the actual stadium event itself. It's looking a lot different at the moment and maybe Heroic are going to steal the way from them. They got two more rounds here and uh, instead they're going to continue on. They're taking their time from Heroic side of things. They don't quite know what to expect from VP, how much money they had, considering the SMGs, etc. They know it's got to be pistols, but what kind? Like the Force Buy. Little do they know, they're up against a pretty much a hard eco. It's only Pasha who's invested in the 5.7, Bialy with the P250. Everybody else, fairly poor on the weaponry side of things. Flank from Snacks and Taz, sure which enough. is great if the rest of Otis Pro can stay alive on the B-bomb side, which I doubt they can. All the grenades are coming in. And the lack of armor is such a big problem. They check twice and no one notices. Pasha gets a double kill. What just happened? Heroic have to invest into some contact lenses or something because this is unbelievable. Modi now in a one versus three trying to fight on the other side of the smoke and versus pro. I, I can't even explain that. No, Taz has got the op now as well. I AK hope we can get a replay now because two people check that. Modi with a headshot long range at least will take down Bialy and... It's still not done this. 15 seconds. Muddy trying for the Ooh. quad kill to clutch it. I like that, though. Good use of the nades, but 10 seconds left. He's just going to decide to back off and save his why weaponry they, here. Why, why are they not pushing? Four seconds. They can't put the bomb. Oh, man. Wait, you get confused? No, I was just wondering why Muddy isn't going for it. He seems like he wants to save the AK. What's the money like for them right now? They must have known. I, that's so confusing to me because he must have known they don't have armor, right? They've just killed a bunch of people mm -hmm. with, with no armor. Yeah, uh, this yeah, is yeah. the beginning. I realized they flashed the first time, but I short sure, Nico's yeah, Nico there. That's weird. pushing looking like, straight at him. That's so confusing. No, what I mean is, um, I, I realized I said they, but I, you know, the first couple of kills they get on heroic, they see that there's no armor, right? That's the first. That's an easy indication if you're on the T side and you're just spraying with the AA. You see, oh, they've got no armor. So all they have to do to win a fight against any of them is hit one body shot, and the aim punches do. The, they're going to do the rest, right? He had to time the first time, he had like 17 seconds or something. Man, I would have closed to try to close out the game then if I was if I was Muddy. Now they get a second chance at life though, you're right. A hard eco win as well for Virtus Pro. You can see the impact that that's had on their economy. Obviously Pasha has that AWP, managed to save it. But they're going for the double AWP strategy here for VP. A very passive hold from Virtus Pro. Although they do have the four stacked up on B site. Looks like Heroic going to be taking point. Flashes in. They've got drop control now. Is there going to be any kind of counter push here from Virtus Pro, or are they just going to sit and wait? And they are going to sit and wait. Bialy's holding really close, so he's hard to flash from this particular angle. Flashes are needed. It seems Nico will be able to open up on Bialy. That's a nice way to get started. And a follow-up kill as well, taking down Taz. Oh, my God. Snacks and Pasha are left here, and they're just getting over on the bomb site. This... This isn't even a contest, is it? Total collapse. They haven't taken a single point of damage, Heroic. Not a single point of damage. This is a flawless round for Heroic. One shot, one kill at a time. Unbelievable. 
Jeez. And now snacks. Well, snacks, I mean, save the op, but it's going to be a battle now. Nine rounds in a row for VP if they want overtime and their tournament life on the line, no less. This is an, un I mean, an unreal, an incredible. Let's go, just go ahead and like put the two words together. You know, an I like incredible it. performance here from Heroic. Yeah, I... If you can win around like that, but I mean, this is the problem, right? It it seems to just sp spark absolutely no sort of a problem. Right? <laughs> Smash, yeah. Where we belong. Uh, this is where heroic put them. Yeah, something like that. Very upsetting. I think a lot of people were where I certainly was. Um, I think I've said this in interviews and stuff, even going into the match, um, that this was. I thought this was a temporary thing from. From VP's point of view, you know, online games, I don't really care about them. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, uh, I think Virtus Pro don't either, but LAN, a big tournament like this one, one of the biggest that we have in Counter Strike, and they just cannot make it work. It's been busy for, for VP, you know, it's not to make excuses, but two of them have got newborn kids. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that's gonna make life pretty difficult to, to actually get a good solid prac in. I mean, you know, Anders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know, because I worked with you at the time when you had your kid. Definitely know. It's, uh, it does complicate matters. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I'm wondering if we're seeing that, ha if that, if that's the impact that we're seeing here for Virtus Pro, if that's why they're looking just this shaky. Sleep deprivation will do strange things to people, but, um, <laughs> but I, I mean, yeah, that could be, I, I don't know. I, I still expect, I just, I think I expect more out of them. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I think everybody does. Um, I mean, VP, come on, the caliber of players here. Definitely very sad in, in my opinion. I don't think it'll, it'll, that all be the end of them, but um, but this should be a massive wake up call for the Polish side. Like th this is this is where you really need to do something about it. Neo and Bialy pick up a couple of frags here, but to get back into overtime, they need to win the next nine consecutive rounds, making pretty much no mistakes. Because Heroic have definitely shown that they are absolutely tuned into this match. Five versus three in this round, and still 28 seconds left for Heroic to try and turn it around. Gonna make the jump down, and that's a nice headshot from Neo, dropping Snappy. That's what you want to see. Yeah, the chaos there. Neo just eking out the frag. Still two players alive on this B site with the quick rotation in from Connector. Will nope. Madi attempts the free fire. Good idea, and he nearly does pick up the kill on the end from Pasha. But Pasha will be the one to keep VP in this fight. Taz, Taz. There we go. Looks like he was just trying to pick up some uh, grenades real quick. Uh, not leaving Bialy hanging. Yeah, you got to get those high fives in, right? But, uh, I mean, that's basically, hey, at least you can get that, right? You know, you can't, it's kind of hard to miss that. Headshots, I get it, but, you know, like, fist bumps? I don't know, in esports, people have been notoriously bad at that, so, um, maybe that's where all the practice has gone for Otis Pro. Just SG2. It's like, it is possible. You can have secret handshakes to boot. The current setup for Heroic is pretty common, nothing out of the ordinary. They are giving up. Quite a bit of control towards drop and B long, which means if Virtus Pro went for a boost or any kind of aggressive push, uh, which is almost never seen, but um, if they did, they'd have a big win on their hands. The snacks opening up, that's a strong kill. And taking down Nico of all players, that's going to feel good. Yeah, that's a good opening. Nico's been doing some real damage. Bialy just hoping that Madi's going to play aggressive. We'll eventually find the kill. Madi caught sleeping. Well, also, kind of difficult to spot out Bialy there because of the vents and how they're structured. But uh, to, uh, I mean, this is still a three on five retake here. Virtus Pro, they got everything they need, and Snack, sure enough, will find the shot on Snappy as well. And so this is just going to fall apart here for Heroic. It would take incredible headshots. And Yugi, he's got the deagle, but Neo hits the headshot first. S tag, though, one and two, but it will eventually line up, and Pasha will find the shot. So 15 to eight for Virtus Pro. Anders, to quote the ancient CS Maxim, it's one round at a time. Yes, indeed. We don't have Nato with us, but um, but you're right. One round at a time. You go back into CS history, it's carved into the wall somewhere. Ancient CS. It's on Aztec. That's where they found it. One round at a time. It took them years to, de to decode it, but then it all made sense. God, I'm glad we're not playing Aztec competitively <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I'm shocked, though, that no one's managed to remake Prodigy, but... 24th round is coming in. Nico with a bit of a charge running actually, and Modi will be able to take the kill, dropping Neo. Pasha with one good reply, and Taz is there to help him up by the rock. Taz with a big double kill. That's gonna spawn some sort of confidence here. A third kill for Taz indeed. 
and he's still got a bit of life left in him. Snappy, the last one left, and sadly Taz runs right into the bullet. Snappy's still locked in here in a one-on-two. He's got plenty of time, and that smoke, if only he had a flashbang, he could mm. actually, he could have done something. I think maybe flashed his way from the smoke, but Bialy picks up the kill. 15-9, Virtus Pro still alive, still fighting, and Heroic, from their point of view, talk so much about Virtus Pro because we're also disappointed they're not playing better, but honestly, from Heroic's point of view here, now's the time to step it up, close out the game, don't let this go on any further. The yeah. one thing you don't want to play is overtime against these guys. That would not be a good idea. No, I know it's looking like a bit of the run and gun here. They have the AKs out, full nades, no AWP picked up for Heroic. And the Molotov already going out to try and mess with Snacks just a little bit. And Snacks, he's like, I can play with Fire too. Pyroman AX everywhere in CS. Snacks has got that AWP. And this time, this time, however, Snacks is not holding aggro. Snacks adjusting his game, taking a much more passive position over here at A-Long. And I don't mind that so much. Um, as long as he doesn't stay there until the smoke is... Well, after the smoke is gone. Yeah. Because then he's in a position where you really easily get Molotov. Then he's going to fall back, so... There we go, yeah. That's a bit of a one-and-done spot, what he was holding. Heroic setting up. They put that forward smoke in so that he, they can't easily get sniped. Snacks is jumping on the other side. This is absolute madness. Taz is nowhere nearby to help him. I mean, if he gets flashed or run down or anything like that, or just sprayed through the smoke, it's done. Taz is down in the middle, yeah, so very dangerous. Now he's fallen all the way back, and it seems like he's actually swapping position a bit with Bialy, who's now going to be in the back of the bomb site. So they're playing for the late round here. They want Heroic to fall into that trap of thinking, listen, we cleared out Taz and Snacks, and that's it, there's no one else on the bomb side, and then boom, the alley's there, Taz gonna be going down. Snacks, can he buy time? Only 30 seconds here, Heroic. Don't realize yet, and they don't have any more Molotovs to check the back corner either, it's a shot on Nico doing a lot of damage, and Bialy waiting, he can win this round. Just needs the right angle, and there it is, taking one. The bomb is right in front of him, and he's not gonna be able to get that kill, and one more step out, and he would have, he would have done it. Insanity. Three players on the A site, four Virtus Pro, and yet Heroic still managed to just bull their way onto the site. No fear whatsoever. It's all on Pasha now. 1v3. And they've got perfect anti-plant, but anti, uh, well, yeah, there's no anti-retake. There's no retake actually at all. There's no hope left for Pasha and Virtus Pro. They're out of the tournament. That is it. VP have not picked up a single map in this group stage. 0 oh, and 3 for them. A disaster. Modi ending on 24 kills with a triple at the end. And I didn't catch Nico before he disconnected exactly how much he had, but uh, overall, just a really, really great game from Heroic. Very impressive. And Virtus Pro trying to build some momentum at the end, trying to see if they could find a way back into it, and they just could not. Oh, man, all of the Polish. I mean, the, there's the whole Polish cheering section that's going to be here again. Yeah. They're gonna have to. Uh, they're gonna have to find someone else to. Uh, to VP are just not able to make big stages right now. This has not been their year so far. Absolutely crazy. We will be back with analysis of all of that. I'm sure the comment of the analysts will have quite a lot to say about this game as well and about Worlds Pro in general. We'll, uh, yeah, be back after a quick break. Stay with us.
The reality has struck once again for the Polish side Virtus Pro. Former titans of Counter Strike and still names that will always be in that infamous catalogue of legends of Counter Strike. However, once again, they find themselves eliminated from a tournament, unable to find the stage, unable to find the crowd, and indeed, that Polish corner often a mainstay in the Langsess Arena. Heroic throw the knockout blow twice in a row as well. I'm not alone. Myself, Machine, joined by none other than Chad Birchall and Adam Freiberg. Yeah. Is that right? Almost. Yeah, I know. What's I like, the I like actual <laughs> uh, pronunciation? Um, probably Freiberg. I oh. guess in, oh. in English, yeah. Oh, no, no, we went to the Swedish. No, the Swedish oh, one. Friedberg. That's exactly what I said. Missing yeah. a few letters in there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, Friedberg. Yeah. Okay, right. anyway. Enough. Pronunciation aside, how do you say they've done it again? in Swedish, because look at this, Heroic. First yeah. in Katowice, they take the home crowd away. Now they take the Langsess away from Virtus Pro. And rather convincing fashion, Adam, what stands out to you in, in the Danes doing it again? Um, I think the, they had a very good read on okay. how VP were playing. Even though VP, as I said, they have a lot of uh, cards up their sleeves, but they still kind of get uh, read by, by Heroic. I think Heroic played it perfectly. The, uh, they had a lot of control in especially drop zone and uh, VP, they do like to split towards either A or B from just drop zone. So uh, great player, like individual plays from, right. from both Heroic and also like team setup, how, how Heroic Now, played. how were they holding? How were they approaching holding that drop room? Because it's infamous in Counter-Strike to be one of the harder positions to play as a CT. Yeah, I think they, they had an extra guy there almost all the time, okay. it felt like. It felt like they were playing defensively enough on A that they could have uh, another guy in connector. So they were like just two guys focusing more on just the drop zone and right. still having good setup towards the B long side. So they had a good read on, uh, on just how VP were executing their strats and uh, I mean, just per individual performance as well. They're having great, sh great yeah. uh, kills when they when they went on drop. A part of that passive setup on A was Yugi, and he is actually, I mean, one of the standout players again. Prior to this game, he was again. He finds himself making a huge impact with the AWP. We'll roll some of the fantastic frags he was dropping as we turn to you, Chad, for your observations. Yeah. A passive A hold. To build on what Adam was saying, I, I think uh, at VP were only able to get five opening kills on their T side, right? Which isn't great because on the T side you want to push the CTs around, make them feel uncomfortable, get that four v five advantage, and then be able to work the map from there. The fact they were only able to do that so few a time, and one of them was on an eco, I believe, means that they really weren't having any stake in these rounds, and they were just getting booked time and time again. Yeah. And when you build off the setup that Adam's talking about, where they're giving up, they're not really playing super forward and not giving away those kills. If you're using all your flashes and smokes to take the normal map territory, when you get to the point of wanting to do a map execution yeah. or needing to push someone out from behind that truck where we saw those orb frags going down, you just don't have that in your back pocket, and it's, it's hard right. to root them out of those positions. But, but so surely the, uh, the argument there is that you, as a CT side, you want to give them some initial aggression. You want to do something yeah. like, to give them the idea that you can do that. You are going to be doing that. Yeah, and that's how you like change throughout a half, right? Yeah. So maybe you start doing that early, and then later in the half, you drop back, and then they're going to use all the utility to get the, that area, and you're not even there. So that's when it gets really frustrating. Uh, you put it a really good way in the green room, giving VP an A for effort on their yeah. strat side of things, because they definitely have strats, and their dry runs have been... Look, like The strat runs well. Sure. They're just not making their frags. Yeah, exactly. So I think, I think overcomplicating things is that what you just, how you describe it, Adam? <laughs> I mean, not necessarily either. I think it's just more of like, like maybe not flashes working properly. Maybe because I mean the wow. the CTs were just mowing them down. It felt like every time they attacked, they just got mowed down, right? Yeah. And as I said, that they I f it looked great. I mean, just from like a tactical perspective on how VP were executing the rounds, then it felt like they didn't get any kills when they went down, yeah. uh, when when they came, rushed out A or came down. Uh, be long or drop. It felt like they, they were just missing some key opponent, and uh, I don't know if it's confidence. I don't know if it's yet more game hours needed to to be able to play that. But it's worrisome for for the major coming up here. Yeah, for sure, and absolutely. And you can see you saw the tweet there from Pasha Biceps himself, just tweeting 16th. It's uh, yeah, actually dead last. First to dead go out. Last. First team eliminated from ESL One Cologne is Virtus Pro, the big stage team, a big stage just you know meters away from this very desk and yet they will not be joining us the poll was eliminated first uh, i guess now let's kind of we'll, we'll, we'll often return to the vp topic but i think sure. we just put that down we pick up that heroic ball for a moment and give some credit where credit is due because this team lost a star a star player that often our analyst desk would be filled with valder is this valder is that he's probably going to get stolen at some point well he sits on the bench for now and heroic have done it again they've faced virtus pro and thrived in a rather convincing 16-9 fashion. And it wasn't even his replacement, you know, getting the frags. It was sure. Nico, Yugi, and uh, Modi, the old yeah. dog, you know? Uh, and th they were just basically grinding out frags uh, across the board. And 
it, it's great to see Heroic, you know, another Danish team doing well. And, and Danish Counter-Strike, I think you can make a fair argument for, it, is the best across the board as a scene at the moment. I forgot about this round. Yeah. yeah. This is a round where they shouldn't even have won, right? I mean, they had one five seven on Pasha, and yeah. this is like the only corner you should really check when you drop down, yeah. especially against an eco, but they, they don't check it yeah. this time. Pasha is standing there, they're getting around. They shouldn't have won, kind of. They win it, and it, that was kind of like their golden ticket to get back into the match. But I think uh, Heroic were too far ahead. Um, at, the, at that point at this round so uh, that was no Kevlar no nothing against no. helmets yep. with what was it a PT-50 and a 5.7 like those rounds I thought those rounds, thought those rounds were not like, they don't happen check your corner don't. check your corners boys come on check your corners we'll leave that there with Fry but closing thoughts from you though Chad uh, not only have we seen heroic stand up stand vigilant VP are eliminated. Do we, get to, do we get to see any more from Heroic? Do they make that 2-2? Do we even get to see them in that final affair? Flip the possible? coin with their opponents, right? So sure. it depends. It's going to be Scary very matchup specific. Around, yeah. um, I didn't feel like they got bullied. I didn't think it was just a... Gen VP weren't doing a general spread and getting map control and making them feel awkward. They were just letting... Like, they were just playing their game and Heroic were there shooting them, which is the goal of the game, right? Yeah. Get five kills, defuse the bomb. They did it all. Heroic have got themselves a win and continue to survive so far here in ESL1 Cologne. Up next, two teams are on the ropes as well. After a marathon of Counter-Strike, Cloud9 have got nothing to show for it. They stand 0-2, and two, and this time they'll be battling none other than the representation of China. Tai Lu are waiting in the wings to go ahead and jump into the server. Another best of one is coming up after our break, so do stay tuned, and Game 2 of Day 2 is on its way.
start your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com. Here we go again. One team down, another to be added to the pile now. Virtus Pro already watching from the stands for playoffs, and now we need to find who will join them. Cloud9 and Tyloo are next on the chopping block, and here, your judge, jury, and executioner. We have, of course, Chad Burchill, Adam Freiberg, and myself, Machine. Now, gentlemen, Tyloo Cloud9, an intriguing affair to discuss, not so necessarily a matchup you get to see all the time or we'll talk about all the time. Tyloo, more specifically, a team we don't get to chat about all that often. Um, you saw some fun facts being kind of thrown in there by Blue. Of course, big shout out to him doing all those tickers and stats down there. With something that we, I'm actually, I'm sitting there going, "Hey, that's a good one." The, one of the players doesn't speak Chinese, apparently. Uh, you guys just said he's, yeah. he's about 20% at this point. Ben Tet, he's Indonesian. Yeah, Indonesian. Who, I mean, if you, if you speak to Blair or watch any of his content, will tell you he's a player he's had his eye on for a long time. He's been showing up here at this event as well, and that's something which uh, it, it's good to see that he's showing uh, his skill yeah. against higher tier opponents. These guys now have been. I guess the major circuit that, that's been happening recently means we've seen more of them, right? They had yeah. the Asian minor, they had the uh, major qualifier, and now they're here. Right. So and a little bit more Tyler in our life. There has been a kind of, you know, a movement that was the hashtag CSGO to Asia where we did talk about trying to get such a huge region, a prolific region in a majority of esports, into Counter-Strike Global Offensive and to have them as another prominent region. Now, Adam, I mean, as someone who has been around since the dawn of Counter-Strike time, uh, this is when I can kind of ask you, you know, has China ever been a presence within the Counter-Strike scene? I mean, back in the day, rolling back the years? I mean, yeah, it was even before I started playing. Yeah. Uh, China was actually a re really good competitor in, in CS 1.6 back in the early days. Uh, I remember talking to Heaton a lot about it. Uh, they went to China and Chinese teams were almost unbeatable, especially in China. Really? Uh, so Chinese CS has been on the top of the, top of the list. Uh, this was a long time ago, though. Um, we've seen other games being big in Asia and uh, China especially. So, But it's fun seeing that the, they, they're picking it up, go though. Uh, yeah. Tylo is probably the team that we see the most. And I think they're just going to... Like get, they're getting so much experience from this, and that we can kind of say that, that they're, they're probably the team that almost always qualifies, for example, for the, the major qualifiers and uh, for those kind of tournaments. So it's fun seeing the Asian CS. I am entree. intrigued to see where this, where this goes. It's, an it's a conversation we can always have some yeah. fun with. So uh, for me, in this matchup specifically, it's two teams who I believe have to play their style of Counter-Strike. 
Okay. I don't think that Cloud9 are good when they try and counter strike. Sure, you can look at little tendencies and you can try and play those things into your game, but Cloud9 are best when they're playing... Um, I don't know how to put this... North American Counter-Strike? Wearing. Uh, a very aggressive brand of CS. Oh, big, big, uh, big, 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 big plays. Yeah, Fudge... Fudge you Counter-Strike. Okay, that's yeah. the what you were looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fudge you. They, they just do their own thing. And it, it, they're always confident when they do that. And then it snowballs, that effect that when Stewie and Automatic are finding those timings and finding space and they're able to get those flanks and multi-kills. Absolutely. Skadoodle now is one that I think we definitely have to address as someone who's... For me, the best way to put this is it looked like he's finally playing the current day version of Counter-Strike. You know what I mean? As a player, when I started playing C CSGO, Jiggle peeking, like some people did it, maybe, sure, but it wasn't like something that was the tendency that every single player had right. to do. Cross-air placement wasn't perfect. We've got to a point now where I think jiggle peeking is, has to be part of your, your game. Your movement has to be really good. Your cross-air placement has to be something special. And now he's clutching. He's winning so many clutches. It's insane. He is the most improved for me on this team over the yeah. last, uh, last couple of months. And we will continue that discussion. In fact, just before that, we do bring up our odds, though, just because I'm really intrigued to know how much of an edge Cloud9 have been given. That's pretty big. Is a yeah, that's a big one. one. Yeah, that's a big one. I, I mean, Tyloo admittedly have come in relatively kind of disappointed and cold into this one. Uh, not only a roster change, but also the kind of the major qualifier or the minor didn't work out for them as well as it could have. So with that said, uh, we can just jump straight back into this conversation because what's interesting to me is you're talking about current brand Counter-Strike. Yeah. And isn't the discussion that China is, you know, oceans behind in terms of where Counter-Strike, like it looks like 2015, 2016 when they're not playing 2017. Kind no, of. I think that th this is the factor I was talking about. That these teams have to play their what's brands their of CS, right? And I think that if, if Tyloo try and change too much to adapt to what uh, Cloud9 are doing, they're going to have a rough time because they haven't had a chance now, like a long chance anyway, with Peacemaker for him to be able to address mistakes in the game, work on new game plans and, and try mm. and fix those problems. They just have to play what they're comfortable with and hope it works enough and then be able to make those adjustments later in the game. I don't think they can start by counter and doing stuff like that, but um, it's, it's just a weird one, right? Because the map pools for these teams, you, you don't really know how it's going to stack up. No, you certainly don't. Now, the man behind us probably needs a mention as well. I know we are, we're jumping all over oh, yeah. the place. He's eating yeah. me right now. He is. <laughs> in fact, you're right there. Slap back in his mouth. Stewie 2K. Uh, I'm sure this is an, an intriguing kind of discussion topic when you do bring up this young man's face. 19 years of age, pro since 2015. Bearing, <laughs> like, like, bearing in mind, we just talked about Taz in the same regard. It was 2005, yeah. like 10-year 10 10 right? gap. Yeah. <sighs> But I mean, Stewie has really uh, adopted his role in the team. Well, you a I fan? mean, he's the, yeah, he's the in-game leader. He's still pulling off like amazing numbers. Uh, always a nuisance to play against, I guess. You, you never know when it's gonna hit you. Uh, but he'll, he'll be there eventually. Mm. Uh, so I think I mean he's good on like being a bit random. I guess I can say uh, he's he's pushing up good timings usually. Um, one thing that I'm questioning is uh, his ability to do this against uh, Tyloo. I know a lot of teams are saying that Tyloo, they're playing like weird CS or sure. like it's, it's hard to play against because they're playing a different style. So I'm not sure like on Cloud9, if they're playing a bit of a, their loose style, I don't know how well it will work against a team like Tyloo because I think it will work better against a more structured team when they can just do some more random stuff yes, yeah. against that okay. more structured team. When I have played Tyloo in the past, it's been w they've just been relentless in their attack on the bomb side. I remember we would play we played them on Cation like the grand final of uh, one of the major qualifiers, and they just kept going B. And I was calling, let's play three CTs in B, but we just weren't playing confident and heads up enough to take the jewels, and they were just Walking coming in. in and just fragging us, right? And it's just you know they just kept doing it. We could have pushed A main and been flanking them and they still would have just taken the bomb site and had no issues. They had no issue um, giving up map control. It's like, oh, sure, you know where we are. Can you shoot fight us? Can us. you fight us? And we just couldn't do that. So Cloud9 are the type of team, anyway, who that in the past have said on their CT sides, they try and like yeah. just focus solely on their own zone. And that means they're always ready to heads up and frag. They're not getting caught like a player like me running with my flash out trying to help a teammate. <laughs> they're thinking about themselves and what they can do to get the kills it's, they need. It's so funny because that, that, that to me, you just described like the worst possible game like in terms of like personal enjoyment because yeah. there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Absolutely nothing you can do. We haven't even done the veto yet, but apparently the game's starting. Yep, Semler is beckoning me over. It's cobble. Let's go ahead and jump in. It's p this first blood. Semla Anders, jump in. Yeah, there we go. A lot of fragging going on. Automatic getting a kill there on Didi. And now it's a two on two. Straight into the action here with Tyloo and Cloud9 on Cobblestone for a best of one game. Let's see how this all plays out. H said and Mo are both up on that A bomb side. And they've seen the bomb right in front. Are they going to go and challenge it? That's a big question. 
Yeah, he said, looking to see if he can get around the corner, and he's going to get instantly with a frag. Automatic goes down, and Tyloo picking up the pistol. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Pistol round here for Tyloo. And, I mean, to be fair, both of these teams, a lot of individual talent. That's pretty much what Tyloo thrive on. That's what Chad was talking about on the analyst desk. They've got a lot of heavy hitters here on this team question is whether or not they're going to be a cohesive unit and that's where I think Cloud9's strengths lie is the fact that yes they have some heavy hitters but they're also much more of a unit they play together they have better teamwork than Tyloo so it's going to be that uh, we're going to have to see oh no well looks like we already had a well we're, we're going to have plenty of time to talk now Anders because uh, we just got to disconnect oh just a player yeah uh, that happens um Tyloo uh I mean I, th I agree that there is sort of a strange and elusive team and I still think Cloud9 are the better team here, though. Like, I think they've been looking a bit better. Uh -huh. um, I like what the panel was saying, that it looked like Skadoodle was actually playing a uh, real Counter-Strike for once. Uh, yeah. He was playing very well on train yesterday and just generally seems to be hitting some really great shots. He had a bunch of clutches in that ridiculous game. So, uh, yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm going to put my, my money on Tyloo here. Oh, sorry, on, on Cloud9. I think they are uh, I think they're the team to look out for. But I don't want to underestimate... Um, Tyloo, they have some some interesting stuff. I mean, one of the things that I really think is hilarious about watching Tyloo is just their sensitivity on, like, their mouse sensitivity is so high on some of the players. Um, I think somebody and Didi both have like a really high sense, and just, it looks hilarious to, to when it's, they play. Yeah, it's weird when you watch them play. There, there are a few like North American players who had pretty high sense. Hiko was one of them who actually had much higher than the others, but um, it's not a common thing. Really, you're you're looking at just having low sense to really have what that clean to Professor Chaos? aim. Oh man, yeah, Professor Chaos, you're right. Holy hell, watching him play was just like motion sickness. Yeah, and he was orping as well, wasn't he, half the time? So mm -hmm. just orping with 20 sensitivity. Well, he, didn't he play? I think he played StarCraft too as well. Like he was, uh, he came from. Uh, no, yeah, I may be mistaken there. I think he. I think Sounds like a crazy transition. But that was Elise, right? Elise. Uh, StarCraft 2 made the transition over to uh, CS. Madness. Absolutely. I do madness. like that though, right? Because you have certain players who are just good at games. You know, Forrest has always been like the legendary one where he could just pick up a game and just start playing it at a good level, like right off the bat. And you're just like, how do you do this? And then Forrest is like, well, just, you know, natural gamer, man. Natural gamer. I'm a game all over you. Yeah. 200,000 years of human evolution and just the pinnacle evolved to play video games, apparently. <laughs> Well, well, the game has resumed once again. If you uh, missed the beginning, it will be uh, Tyloo with a one-round lead here. Cloud9 unable to get the bomb plant down in that round, so they're going to be buying into this one with quite a bit of utility. Getting a couple of good flashbangs, especially on the B side of the map. Well, already presence over in B halls for Cloud9. Skadoodle, no surprise that he will be, whoa, no, not quite managing his economy as much as I thought. He's actually bought quite a bit. He dropped for a teammate because he's got a Glock. So interesting here. We'll be Stewie with the raid boss approach. Tech 9 Kevlar. And while Cloud9 right now, they're just patiently waiting to see if Tyloo do what Tyloo do best, which is go aggressive. That's what's cost Tyloo so many rounds in the past. They just take unnecessary risks in situations that favor them, where they just need to sit and wait, and instead they're out there looking for fights. Right now they're doing a good job at uh, staying pretty close. I like, well, now that Ben Tet is moving up towards the actual plateau, but they were having a pretty tight little circle going on down there towards the drop. Stewie's made his way out, but there's a f smoke in the way. He's not going to care much, just gets flashed through, turning that back to somebody. And he'll pick up big, two big kills. Ben Ted eventually drops. Ah. Didi's still on the site to get the kill on Skadoodle, and that will be Tyloo winning a second round, only losing two players. Definitely not the end of the world, crushing that from Cloud9. And no bomb part either for the Americans. Nope. So, once again, you're going for that kind of force buy. You at least, like, that's like, there's a checklist, right? Bomb plant? Yes, good. You know, a few kills, even better. Now, of course, you win the jackpot if you actually win the force buy round. But you really do need to at least get that bonus 800 because now you have no Kevlar. You don't even have a flash grenade, not a single flash. Somebody should be taking the hit here and just investing $200 in that flash to give yourself even a small chance of getting out onto that B site for the plant. Because right now you've got three players who are ready and waiting on Tyloo. And this is going to be looking a bit brutal. Yeah, which you, maybe if you're really lucky, you can, you can run someone down with a Glock, but more than likely, oh, well, as long as you no head armor for somebody. That's just such a big risk. Why would you do that? 
Just as we were talking about the Glocks being largely ineffective when they don't have head armor, it's much better. Actually, we just a perfect illustration. DD did have head armor, and he's just down to 53. No trouble at all. A five on three here, and I'm not sure why Cloud9 are delaying this so much. Surely it's worth it to just get on with the game. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Well, there you go. One for one trade. Good enough. And then Ben Tess is like, nah, I don't think so. Double spray on Stewie and Ska. And it's going to be a 3-0 lead now for Tai Lu on the CT side of Cobble. Cloud9 finally can buy, but there was not enough money for Skadoodle to go for the AWP, sadly for him. And sadly for Cloud9, because we've actually seen some pretty impressive rounds out of Skadoodle. With uh, that AWP, I mean, yesterday versus Navi, everything was pretty much bad shit. And, uh, well, Ska was a p big part of that. Lots of 1vx situations and some flashy off plays as well. Let's see how they do here. T-side cobblestone, I mean, definitely some fun places you can use the op to open with, but um, they could do just fine with the AK as well. They're a bit worried that Tyloo are gonna go aggressive a bit late in the middle here, but that doesn't seem to be the case since that Captain Mo is over by A long. There's a bit of a fight in drop. DD will take one. It's still a pretty good trade here for Cloud9. They get the kill on HC and see what they uh, they can do next. Captain Mo sneaking in. The timing is almost perfect, but Skadoodle dead back steward up, and it's going to be three versus four now. Yeah, advantage for Cloud9. Rotation's already coming back over towards this A site as well. Cloud9 may have missed an opportunity, but it's only a single player over here. It's DD. He's all the way at the back of the site, so he's got that going for him, but they still have a Molotov on Stewie, and we'll see where he decides to use it. Nothing has got the angle now, and he spots him out. Easy kill for nothing. Hit that shot every day of the week. And that leaves it two players here alive for Tyloo. Stewie in position to catch them. Rotating, but somebody's there to be the hero. Manages to find the kill just before Stewie was about to assassinate his teammate. Instead, it's only a man advantage now for Cloud9 with that bomb rotated all the way back over towards B. Tyloo have no idea what's going on now. No, they really don't, but they might have just heard that flashbang behind them, so that should be a bit of an indication that something is up. The bomb will certainly go down. Somebody in Bentet, if they pick up this round, that would be a huge clutch on their part. Long range spray, somebody getting a headshot on Skadoodle, who is being way too exposed in that one. It will be a good spray from Shroud. And Bentet in a one versus two trap. That's a great grenade right in Shroud's face, and he's still pushing up to it. He's got to be quick about it, and he's not quick enough. Nothing will come with the flank. And Cloud9 will win the round in spite of some shaky movement there. Tough break there for uh, Bentet. That was a filthy nade. If Shroud had just been a little bit lower in HP, what a different situation would have been because Bentet knew that he had a man at his back. So that information would have been key. And the bomb wasn't even planted for the man rotating over from A as well for Cloud9. So sometimes, you know, Lady Luck, she's just not smiling at you. It's not going to be your day, and Cloud9 are on the board, not wasting any time at all. Double AWP setup here for Tyloo, though. They're throwing chance to the wind, Anders. They really are putting all of their economy on the line here in this round. Well, I kind of like it. Definitely an aggressive buy this early on, especially when those two orbs are being supported by two FAMASs and one UMP, and very little utility outside of that. Let's see what Cloud9 can do if they realize that this is going on. I mean, this is something that we didn't see out of Virtus Pro. They were not doing a good job at, at shutting down really anyone, but especially Yugi with that AWP. They, they needed more flashbangs and everything else. We'll see if Cloud9 can do a better job on the T side here, which normally we do see teams do. Stewie's managed to make his way quite far up onto the site, but does get caught by the truck. And now, uh, the rest of the push going towards the B bomb side. There's Ben 10. Picking up one, the encounter grenades coming in towards him. They've got a Molotov on nothing, but it's not being thrown just yet. Instead, shot coming through the box. He's buying so much time here. Somebody gets a kill with it from us. Ben Tet still going strong, and now Didi close to the broken wall gets the spray on one. Automatic is in a lot of trouble, but at least he picks up that kill. Didi is so like so aggressive, just running in there looking for the duel. They just refuse to back off Tyler. Once the engagement is through, that's it. They're looking for the fight and. The timing is impeccable. Automatic will find the headshot on Captain Mo. That was a brilliant shot, but he has no idea that there's a man on the site right now, and this may come back to haunt him. Reload sound. Looks like somebody was just far enough not to hear it, but it won't matter. He gets the timing on automatic, gets the peak, even saves one of the AWPs. What a key round for Tyloo, but those plays. 
Yeah, Bentet just going big on the on the plateau. That's a really important double kill that he picks up there. And I mean, they don't, they did only have one Molotov, but maybe they could have forced him out. You know, maybe nothing could have could have got rid of him or run through the smoke together. Yeah, something like that. Sixth round is coming up here. And Tyloo making it interesting. Cloud9 only allowed to win a single round before they are back to pistols again. Very frustrating, although Stewie's already taken down Ben Tent. That's over by the plateau again. Aggressive positional play from the Chinese. Yeah, young Stu. He's had slow starts so far this tournament on the maps. So we do need to see a strong start here out of uh, Stewie. Otherwise, I think Cloud9 will be struggling once again. But if he's able to get a few confidence building frags like that, the Stewie that we all know and love can show up and actually start wrecking house. It's going to be up to Tyloo and it's going to be up to Bentet, I think, to shut him down. Not this time, however. Oops. Automatic, just trying to make as much noise as possible over here. Oh, I like this push. This is so well done by somebody. Very few players actually managed to do this, but he's quite aggressive to try and find the information. Automatic will go down to Didi. And now, HC up on the bomb side, going for a bit of a fight for the AK. Stops the bomb and stops Shroud as well. Not good enough for Cloud9 in terms of pushing the bomb side, and that leaves Stewie, who's uh, managed to make his way up by the truck. He's got 40 seconds. He's also got a bullet in the face. Let's see, picking up a third kill of the round for him. What is going on? Not able to trade frag? Not a I mean, this, were this shouldn't come as a surprise, right, where Tyloo, they have the individual players. They have the individual skill to just be monsters, right? Anyone on this team, we've seen them all just have crazy plays. It's just the fact that Cloud9 are not able to get these trade frags. We saw Bentet from the round before. Here it's Didi who shines, where there are two players, three players from Cloud9, and they aren't able to trade effectively. Instead, it turns into a multi-kill for the man holding, and that's coming back to bite Cloud9. They desperately needed to start trading some rounds together. Instead, it's going to be Tyloo with the hard reset on them. 5-1 to one for Tyloo, and an eco here for Cloud9, and a row of kill. Yes, Bentet quad spray before he gets roasted by his own teammate. Didi, what are you doing? You're supposed to help him. Not fry him. Listen, he, he, he just want to make sure that he wasn't taken hostage in that situation. <laughs> you know, gotta be. There's a better way out, right? Oh, brutal. Six one is the scoreline, and moving into the eighth round, it is Cloud Nine a little bit behind. But um, we'll see if if it's gonna go horribly wrong like it did for Virtus Pro. If they can start to build a comeback here, I feel like Cloud Nine still have plenty of options left and things they can potentially try out. They've been. Pretty aggressive and pretty fast-paced, Cloud9. Mm -hmm. This setup, actually, we saw in the previous match as well. That smoke is uh, going to make it a bit annoying to try and get that scope in for Skadoodle. We'll see. They've got that double. They can set up for a double peek if they want here, Tyloo. Depends on the flash from their mate. That's DD, who is... Uh, no. Yeah, it is DD who's holding by drop right now. It's going to be the deep flash from Bentet. He's going to set it up. They are full flash. Skadoodle can't see a damn thing right now. But there it is. Sure enough, he goes for the peak, finds one, and Shroud is there to collect the headshot on somebody as well. So now, it's going to be on DD, last man alive here on the B site. Captain Mo is currently locked out. He's over on A site by connector, and there's already a man in position to cut him off. That is the perfect way to get that boost to work. You can't really get any better than that. Very well done. Automatic going to get smoked off for the moment. Maybe if you'd stand up, it would have been interesting. Nothing taking down HC, and we'll leave DD alone as he loses Captain Mo. So very measured round coming up, Cloud9, anticipating some of the Chinese aggression, mm -hmm. and it just backfires heavily on Tyloo. So now, 6-2, and the money is not really there for Tyloo. I mean, they have a lot of a bank on Captain Mo, but still buying, forcing into this round, I would say is a risk. If you're Tyloo, you, you've got to think, this is, the CT side is not where we win, need to win all our rounds, you know? So this is tough for Peacemaker, and you can see it right now. He's really focusing on talking to just a couple of the players, because only a couple of the players actually know English. Bentite is one of them on Tyloo. And so what happens, it's like Chinese telephone, basically, where Peacemaker talks to one, and then the other one has to translate into Chinese. And so Peacemaker basically has to keep all of his points really succinct. He, he, he was complaining about this the other night, right, while we were just chatting. He's just like, this is how it has to work. I have to be very quick with my words and make sure that he understands so that he can then try and translate in time before the round actually starts. You know, everybody was wondering how it would work out with Peacemaker joining up with Tyloo, but it doesn't sound like much fun, right? To be in the hot seat as the coach and not be able to properly communicate clearly. I mean, that's actually really interesting. I'm kind of glad that Peacemaker is doing this because... What a boss! Yeah, because, well, it's also like, 
what if it works? You know, what if he can actually sort of, uh, you know, put some of the information from Western Counter-Strike towards that part of the world and, and maybe they can grow as a region too? Like, it's, it's certainly, certainly, I think, a worthwhile experiment. Very curious to see how it plays out. So far, looking quite good, actually. 6-2 is a very decent scoreline early on here. They did force into this round, like I said, they shouldn't. Um, but we'll see if it pays off or not. I would be perfectly happy if I was Tyler with picking up like eight rounds in the first half. Mm -hmm. So if you just save here and then you go for full double up next round anyway, then more power. I'm gonna really lay the smack down. Ooh. A little bit of a party favor there left by Bentet. Just does a little bit of damage to automatic. Not too, uh, not too crazy with the HE. This is looking like it's going to be action B-side again here, although we just ticked past the minute mark here for Cloud9. Bomb is waiting in B-halls, and they are setting up once again to, to get control of Plateau for Cloud9, and things have been working out pretty good for him, and this is going to be perfect. There's only two players alive on the B-side right now, Anders. Not a whole lot of defense, and nothing trimming the defense on A as well gets the kill on somebody. Yeah, and even more than that, it keeps the two people, HC and Captain Mo, that are over there. They have to stay there for a while. They will find nothing, so... That's always good. Now Ben Tet has to go really big with the Thomas and instead he's going to get shot in the back by Automatic who finds the perfect timing. And HC and Captain Mo, said, don't do this. Don't go for the retake. It isn't worth it. But just the dreams. Yeah, but the, even with the dreams, it's just not worth it. They've, they spent all of their money this round. I think I think that was a mistake from, from Tai Lu. Um, listen, they're playing on the less favorite side here mm -hmm. if they can if they can pick up yeah seven eight rounds that should still be pretty good especially because cloud nine notoriously uh are not very good at playing the season side in my opinion i think they do their best work on t side where some of their more aggressive players like stewie and automatic could be allowed a lot more room to work with and on ct side cobblestone those players are going to have a really hard time finding an outlet for that aggression it's so hard to play aggressive ct side cobble so yeah, I, I don't know what the urgency was for Tyler to buy that around, but I'm sure they had a plan. Now, they've got no money, though. It's that trap that you fall into. You don't want your opponents to get too far ahead. Thinking, okay, well, if we could just pull this off. And uh, sometimes it works, and that's what reinforces it. It's almost like a bad habit, you know? It's just like, oh, but it worked that time, so it's definitely going to work this time, right? Sadly, no. No, this reality just doesn't uh, really play out that way. Six to three, though. And Tyloo. What's it? this reality thing you're talking about? Oh, sorry, the simulation, the yeah. coding, right. Right, the coding of the simulation doesn't. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes there's a there's a glitch, and uh, that's when somebody wins a force buy. Oh, AC, he's gonna be in trouble. When he repeats this, he's gonna realize, wait a minute, there's just a lot of people there. His teammates are gonna get smoked off before they get there, so he's pretty much alone with the USP. Lots of grenades raining in. Good hit from Cloud9 here. This is uh, pretty well thought out, and um, they're using the grenades to make sure that they don't sort of run into any kind of craziness, and it looks like Stewie is in charge of picking up at least a couple of kills there. Leaving Ben Ted alone with an M4, making his escape. Someone should try and stop that from happening. Yeah, especially because the bomb only just now got planted. Yeah, Automatic has almost 7k, Shroud has almost has 6k, almost, yeah, so, so those two, let, let Automatic and Shroud go for a hunt here. I do like it when you have the CTs who are on the other side of the smoke, when the full execute's coming in, just turns CS into a game of Tron, basically. Just like laser beams everywhere, all yeah. those nades sailing. I love it. It's gorgeous. They really aren't hunting. I mean, nothing is sort of sticking around, so... Uh, this is interesting. Ben Tent, I wonder, in his position, he's actually got the most money on the team, so he could probably... I mean, they're not, I don't think they're going to be able to buy an extra round anyway here on the Tyler side, or at least it would be it'd be really, really tight if they did. But maybe he could just buy armor, and then he has the M4, and then who knows what happens. He could be the hero. I mean, he's got the aim for those kinds of plays, especially if they go be plateau again. Him having a gun can make a big difference. Uh, they are going to buy into this round again, Tyler. It isn't the end of the world, it's just... I really want them to have that double up capability. It looked like Bentet was doing a good job on the plateau. They buy, but it's... Yeah, they're, they're lacking a lot of grenades. And that could absolutely be a problem. The 11th round is about to commence with uh, a similar style from Cloud9. Taking over the B hallways. Stewie this time covering the back earlier. There was nothing doing that, but um, that doesn't really matter. 
Ooh, Ska's bringing that up over here. Last problem, or prob like, I'm thinking, is there a scenario in which Bentet could kill Ska and pick up the op? But uh, Skadoodle is usually the last man onto the site, which is why he's usually left in a lot of 1vx situations for Cloud9. Uh, Shroud leading the way, taking point here on Plateau. Got all of his mates there to back him up. The Molotovs are sailing into the site, and things are about to get a bit hairy here for Tylu. They have not yet found a kill, and as I say it though, Bentet on the site, peeks out, finds Shroud, then they line up for somebody! Two kills for him, Ska not able to reply on the Plateau, looking to find it with the pistol in the end, and that's not gonna be good enough! Beautiful work, what a hold for Tylu. Very well done, and that's in spite of the fact that Cloud9 did almost everything by the book then. Um, they had great Molotovs, good, good smokes coming in as well. Um, and then they, oh. just, they just couldn't really execute on time, but uh, very well done. If you're somebody, right, that's one of the all-time best feelings in the world if you're playing CS, yeah. You come through the smoke, nobody's looking at you, they lined up, you just, you just gotta grin. Like, <laughs> this is gonna be good. 7 to 4, Cloud9 had the money to buy again, and HG has taken a lot of damage. Already. That's by Long, Ooh. and that's a nice pick off. Somebody goes down, 7 to 4, Tyloo potentially in risk of losing uh, their lead here. Boy. Cats and Mo goes down next. Now it's a five on three, and Cloud9 are very confident. It seems slow playing this uh, the early part of this round. They, Tyloo are giving them the fights, and Cloud9 are winning them, and that's all they need. Yeah, that's what Cloud9 loves to do. And sure enough, H that gets caught with the flash in hand, and Stewie picks up the kill on DD over by Connector, leaving Bentet the last man alive here. And if he can just stay alive with this AWP, that would be glorious. Goes for the no scope on Shroud. Sure, why not? Uh, now it's just a matter of him staying alive, and it's not going to be long because we already have a man exactly on a mission looking for the flank, and he's going to get it. Sorry, Ben Tet can't rotate around fast enough that time to save yourself. They're just so stunned. They're stunned into, into motionlessness. Time for a pause as well now for Tyler with Tactical, I assume. Um, that might be time, and there we go, Ben Peacemaker. Almost, if you could read hand signals, you'd be able to to get a picture of what's going on here. But yeah, I think this is a good time for a, for a for a pause. Again, their money's not looking great. I would still, I would, I wouldn't even be that sad if I was tired when I and I just got seven rounds. I'd be like, okay, um, now it's our turn for this for the T side, and now that's where we can really unfold. But uh, I I like how animated Peacemaker is. It's kind of interesting. Uh, he's just trying. You Man, you, you talk to coaches who speak the same language as their teams, and that's an agonizing position to be in when you're just watching. It's like, I can't say a word. I can't communicate with them. I can't tell them what they're doing right or wrong. Imagine if you had the, the communication barrier as well to deal with. Props to Peacemaker. That takes some chutzpah. Oh, man, and Tyloo. Here we go. They've actually invested in this round as well. Well, yeah, but uh, not, not everything. Just, just the half by. Just the half by, which is fine. Don't have any argument against that at all. Um, give yourself a chance if you feel like it. They should be able to buy in the next round because their round loss bonus, I guess it's not that much, but um, but they've, they've got something to work with in the upcoming round anyway. Yeah, there will be there will be a buy coming up. How good of one? We'll see, but the Molotov's are already going out. Somebody hoping to get that shotgun into play. Not meant to be this time around. Stewie assassinates him, annihilates him, obliterates him, just gets a headshot. And that leaves it down to a 5-on-4 here for Cloud9. Two players still on the A side, though, for Tyloo, and so we'll see. They haven't had much luck holding by the wood, by wood wall, uh, the exit from A long. They haven't had much luck over there. Captain Moe, he's got a deal, so we'll see. Point blank, maybe he gets lucky. Automatic trying to mask the nope. sound of him dropping, which uh not sure was entirely successful. But it's still a 5-on-3 here. Limited utility on the Tyloo team. They're actually weirdly boosting up f where Automatic came from, so I don't know how this is going to play out, but it should be working out for Cloud9, just given the money that they have and the rifles as well. I guess Ben's was running there. Yeah, he probably was. I mean, I mean, how, I mean that is just a really confusing round altogether. 7 6, and the 14th round is coming up, and Tyloo, now they've got the pie on their hands. It's still not that great. This is really frustrating to me. We have had three buys like this and one of them has worked out and the other two haven't but i would have much rather exchanged you know this for two good buy rounds or like two two real rounds where they can really pick it up listen it goes against the rules of cs go to go for two rounds of eco handers no yes just no 
Doesn't happen. Go for the FAMASes. Only have half of the nades you need. And uh, pray, hope for the best, because Cloud9 right now, they are making the comeback happen. Tyler with a very strong start. But Cloud9, they're nearly tied up, 7-6. to six. And Cloud9, of course, with a full buy on their side. And this time they're going to be stacked outside of A. So with two players holding solid here for Tyler, things could get interesting. I really like that deep flash. It allows for Stewie exactly to charge straight out onto the slope. Spots the boost. Will not be able to pick up the kill. And in fact, Tyler doing a tremendous amount of damage. Two kills for them. Yeah, but how did they get the backup up to Didi, who's on the bomb side alone? Everything is smoked off at the moment. And all he has is a FAMAS. This is very tricky. Maybe on the balcony, someone can come and help out. The bomb being counted. They don't check the bomb site. How nine, that's unacceptable. Again. They had the time, no problem. They're gonna lose the round because of it. That's a big oversight on Cloud9's part. In what world do you run up and just start planting the bomb immediately? Yeah. That's definitely an issue. 15th round is coming up next, and Cloud9 have enough money to buy, plenty of money to buy, in fact, there's this one, including the AWP on Skadoodle. There's one on Captain Mo as well, currently. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Tai Lu, I still think it's great. Eight rounds for them, very impressive. Cloud9 sort of had a roll in the middle of this half, but um, not as not as good as it could have been, I think. Just some unforced errors that are end up caught that end up costing them quite a bit here. Just like that last round right there, that is just a painful one. Bit of a mistake. Nothing's going to be kicking himself. They didn't win the duel. A lot of damage going out on the shroud though, who took point on plateau. It looks like he's asking if automatic maybe wants to take his place. Bomb is still outside of A, however, and they're looking to see if they can't find anything over there. What's this? Was he asking for a boost and Shroud was like, no? Nah. It's hard to say, but... It was unfortunate for Shroud because he was actually just inside the smoke waiting, so it was just a blind shot thing coming out from somebody. HC will take down Stewie. And now we're off to a bit of a start here. If Tyler wins his ninth round, I would say they're looking pretty good to maybe upset Cloud9, which I think would be a bit of an upset. Tyler definitely not with the same amount of experience. Automatic right on the other side of DD. DD with down to 45 seconds here, and the bomb is still not being picked up. It's all the way by Shroud. So Cloud9 have got to be careful, they don't run out of time. There's the risk, and there's the shot. DD once again not missing the opportunity. This is primed for Tyloo to end this half very strong indeed. 8 to 6, and they have a two man advantage. Shroud is lit, he's down to 7 HP. And while still two players holding solid on Tyloo, and it's going to work, HZ finds nothing. It's going to be two players left, and Skadoodle will find the shot onto Captain Mo, but now it's a matter of just collapsing onto this site, and DD out in the open, doesn't matter! Ska blind hits that one, and he gets the follow-up as well! He's looking to make it happen again! Ska, you're invincible! They can't take him down! Well, never mind, somebody finds the shot, but Shroud is there to be the hero. Quad kill for Ska! Unreal! Look at the rest of his team looking at him. They just don't even know what just happened. That's an absolutely stolen round. Skadoodle, beast, still to this day. Very impressive stuff. And I don't even know. That's that's just heartbreaking for uh, for Tyloo. They pretty much had that round on lock. And the fact that Shroud is the one surviving, he got shot down to seven health at the beginning of the round. We'll see what happens in the second half. It's coming up right after the break. <laughs>
and we are back second half is coming up here with Tyloo and Cloud9 and currently it's actually a pretty exciting game we've got an 8-7 scoreline Tyloo uh, almost making it 9-6 but Skadoodle had just a different opinion about how that round was going to turn out mm -hmm. I mean pretty much the best uh, the best round of the game I think in terms of excitement very cool stuff I think Tyloo in spite of some, what I would say, pretty poor economic uh, choices for them in the first half, right. they still did an amazing job. And I would say, yeah, as the score would suggest, it's pretty right. even. Is it meme time, Anders? Because, you know, they're, they're, with is it, nine, is it never no, not meme time? Exactly, right? So it's like, you know, Shroud, the meme back in the day, it was like, if we could just get him to think that he's streaming in an official match, well, yeah. then he's just going to frag everybody, right? True. Here, I'm noticing that Scott, including yesterday, if it's like the last round or the before last round of the half, all of a sudden he just goes into beast mode and just starts wrecking everybody and pulling off crazy plays. So every round is the last round, Ska. Just think that. Think that and get triple kills every round. Cloud9 will be happy. Look at this setup from Cloud9. This is so dirty. I think we've seen this from them before, but I really love it. It's um, the stack over in the corner. Nothing in Stewie, who's like double holding the uh, the actual chicken coop. They fall out Dway just as I say. That's really disappointing. But the cool thing about it is, it's so unlikely anyone's going to have a Molotov to clear that out. Mm -hmm. So first guy peeks, takes a bit of a fight. If he dies, then they'll never suspect for there to be a second guy. Nothing though, going aggressive. Taking a fight with Captain Mo and winning it with the help of Stewie. Nothing with a headshot. And now HC with one reply, but this is great news for Cloud9. That's that's a bold move if you're Cloud9, especially because this first setup was so cool. But now things could really work out. They're trying to see if they can get into middle automatic. will take a headshot. Shroud, inspired by that, will do one of his own. And HC now still in a lot of trouble. Oh, and More Scott's trouble. there. Yep. Well, no, he doesn't have any troubles anymore, Anders. No troubles left in that round. Everybody getting a piece of the action on Cloud9 as well. That's a feel-good moment for them. They get the strong start on their CT side, winning the pistol, and the pressure mounts, continues to mount for uh, Tyloo. So, Peacemaker, you know, he's in his own... It's like a, it's a, his own little per personal coach hell at this point. He's got two timeouts left, though. So he does have two timeouts left, and knowing Peacemaker, he doesn't hold off using them. So we'll see when he decides if it's going to be before the, before the 19th round, Tyloo's first buy round, if he decides to pull the trigger then. Get a timeout in there so you can talk it over with the team real quick. Because every mound, ma every round rather, matters right now. Bit of a jump there, and they did spot the boost that was coming in, or Ben Ted did. And again, Cloud9 just holding pretty defensively. Stewie and nothing over by the Planto. And again, uh, one of those positions from Stewie. It's almost like someone could make a flow chat about standing in that corner because. It, you know, if you know they don't have any money, it's fine. You could do, the, do this all day. As soon as they have enough money f to buy the Molotovs, this becomes a big risk. So, yeah, pretty good stuff. I, I definitely like it. So I'm trying to mess okay. the sound of dropping again. Uh, then they drop after he stops shooting. Very interesting. Shroud and Skadoodle, and then Shroud again with the MP7 as they do just shut down that whole flank. Seemed like there was a bit of miscommunication there on Tyloo, yeah. Nothing eventually goes down to somebody. Nice uh, peek from Stewie. He got tired of waiting in the corner, apparently. Now it's just DD on long. Does have a Tech 9 and armor, but can't really make any use of it. So now it's Cloud9 taking the round lead, making it 9 8 in their favor. Mm -hmm. Not really a big lead, but. Good enough. Tyler still can't buy. Exactly. They, they still can't buy because they're not getting bomb plants here in these situations. And so this investment for Cloud9 is just going to pay a huge dividend. Now, look, they don't even have to go up to M4s unless they want to. Stewie is going to go for it. But they could just stay on these, uh, on these UMPs and these MP7s no problem at all. They know that they're running up against un unarmored opponents again. And then when the next round rolls over, drop the MP7s, pick up a couple M4s, and go to town. Ooh. A yeah. Very similar kind of setup here for Cloud9, which is uh, just fine. They have swapped it out a bit with Stewie holding a bit further back this time. Nothing but a great spray. Quad kill for him, and there's the instant ace. That's so incredibly quick. I mean, it doesn't quite beat the record, but um, yeah, that was only a couple of seconds. Talking about, <laughs> talk about making money. Quad kill with the UMP. Let's go. Filthy rich. All of that in one mag as well. That's unbelievable. Just spray and pray. Big return on investment. Slight bonus round, at least on some of the Cloud9 players here coming in just because of the MP7 and the UMP.
definitely very questionable weapon it's on a map like this not you can get into positions for the first fight but the problem is if you have to retake then these weapons become a pretty big handicap questionable the one thing here is that Bentad is just like when will i ever get to play with the op <laughs> will, will this happen someday i've heard that they're pretty cool oh nothing opening up and taking down somebody but that's only part of the problem cloud nine have full control over this this is so rare that we get to see anyone pushing this mm -hmm. see if it's gonna work out for cloud nine automatic with a good kill and hc was actually flashed for a while but um not enough apparently for automatic to follow up the kill stewie going aggressive ben ted who read the situation very well well so three on three now this is uh, getting a bit chaotic this is a little all over the place Automatic recommitting to the fight and then Stewie pushing aggro has really cost Cloud9 quite a bit. We're into a three on three now and this, this situation should favor Tyloo. All three of them gathered over, gathered over towards the A site. There's only a single player here for Cloud9 to stop this push coming through. But that is going to be Skadoodle with the AWP. And if he can maintain that level that we saw towards the end of the first half, things are going to get fun. Things are going to get pretty interesting here. Could be turning into a bit of the turkey shoot. 20 seconds left, and there's the flash. Ska still alive, hits the first shot, makes it look easy, no problem at all. Will he get the follow-up, though? That's the question. They're waiting for him, and in the meantime, the cavalry will soon arrive. Not gonna hit the follow-up, though, but Ska trying to stay alive. He's still doing such a fantastic job of not overpeaking. They're not actually able to get onto the site. Seven seconds left, and they're not even gonna get the plant. It bought more than enough time for Shroud to rotate in, and nothing will pick up the final kill. Skadoodle staying alive. It's a flashback to Kenny last week. That's just so frustrating, isn't it? Like, you, the, the one of the worst ways to lose, just having no time at all to actually take those fights. If they had had 40 seconds, then, you know, they could have slowed it down and tried to try to make it work. But 8, 11, 3 round lead for Cloud9, and it's a bit of a problem for, for Tyloo now. The money is really starting to to catch up to them. They just, every other round, it seems now, is a save round. They've lost four in a row in the, first, uh, in the second half here. Mm -hmm. Pretty tough. They're not going to have uh, much room for air after this next one. What they desperately need, Tyloo, is a bomb plant. They need the bonus money going into the next round. So that they can get bent at that AWP or Captain Mo. Hell, go double op right now on T-side. Really, just throw something big here at Cloud9 because you're going to have to dig deep. It's going to be three dropping into drop room. Shroud is close enough to hear it. Going to be able to pick up a kill, but he does actually expose himself to somebody. The refrag is there. Stewie stops DD from actually pushing onto the site itself, however. And this is now automatic. Holding off on connector. Ah, oh, clever here from somebody. Yeah. Wait, did he just throw the bomb up only for Bentet to drop down again with the bomb? Yeah, I think they changed their minds <laughs> halfway through. It is kind of an interesting feature that you can do that, though. Sometimes it definitely can pay off to uh, to try and and fake it out, especially if the CTs have already seen the bomb, uh, if they know that it's dropped down. Might be a bit of a play there. Stewie, hiding in the corner, they don't have anything to check it with, so they're just gonna have to go out, and that's an instant death, and could have been a follow-up, nothing instead in charge of taking that kill, and closing out the round as well, for a 12-8 scoreline, just a four-round gap, but it is, it is becoming bigger here in favor of Cloud9. 18 kills on nothing, automatic on 17, we have just been seeing a lot of games lately where nothing is one of the players really having a big impact. That's wild. Yeah, throughout the, the qualifiers for the Major, here again, nothing seems to be able to have his moments where um, he hits the shots. I mean, granted, he got four kills on that anti-eco, so that definitely goes a long way. But, uh, no, the A, sorry. Four kills with UMP. But uh, still, you have to give it to Jordan. He is still one of the standout players, one of the North American legends to carry it over into CSGO. And this is a tactical timeout used here by Ty Lu, Peacemaker, jumping on the opportunity now. So they've had that round of eco. Now they're going to get the buy. And so finally Ty, uh, Peacemaker decides, all right, let's, let's slow things down here. See what we can do. They've been very aggressive on the B plateau. I think that's the main source of Ty Lu's problems right now. Cloud9, are, they, they're so good. Stewie and, and nothing are actually quite a lethal duo on that side. And if you can't get B plateau control, there are a lot of options that immediately disappear from, from, from what you do. The problem is, it's not even like you just focus on the A side because if, if you're not showing any presence on B, you're gonna be fighting two or three people on A pretty quickly. So you, you have to force the CTs back in some way. There's actually for once around where Cloud9 are a bit more conservative on the B side and, and are holding a bit further back. And maybe that could give some space to Tai Lu here 
HC living life on the edge, but the fire will stay away for a moment. An imperfect flash, but it still serves its purpose. HC able to make his exit, and now the flash. This is going to open things up here. Shroud was not caught blind. Not caught blind by that one either. That's going to open it up, but the crossfire is perfect, and Stewie is there to pick up two kills. Nothing finds one. Point blank drops DD. And Stewie reigns supreme on this site so far. Three kills for him and Tai Lu. And what a I mean, quad kill for Stewie at the end. But an, an all-important round for Tai Lu. How is nobody flash to holding by that rock? I mean, that's kind of mad. Two of them, and one of them is designed to hit the guy who's holding. No, but, but Shroud was actually holding close to the door. So he was standing within, like, flash went off behind him. Yeah. On the I, first one. I don't know. Like, that was just not quite good enough for Tai Lu. 8.13, the gap continues to grow, Tai Lu's money is still not looking good, they don't have many timeouts left, just one I believe, mm -hmm. they need to make this work right now, and I think, again winning the fight by the broken wall and shutting down DD, the follow up is kind of there, but it's a bit late from HC, he's gonna pick up nothing at least, and now spraying wildly through, eventually automatic goes down to Captain Mo, that's actually on the other side where the bomb is making its way up with Ben Tet as well. So Cloud9 just gonna give up on the fight in B and say, let's just go for where the bomb actually is. Skadoodle holding, bit of a gap shot, but he actually can't hit it either. Looked like maybe he had the chance for it there. Shroud goes down, and that leaves Stewie walking out onto the site. HC coming in, trying to see if he can sandwich him. Ben Tet has to wait for him, and Stewie, if he gets the timing wrong, he's gonna get shot in the back. It's not that far away now. He's been spotted. Ben Tet buying time for his teammate. That's very good instinctual play coming up. But oh, it's a team flash instead. Stewie's gonna go down, but that could have been an absolute disaster. Oh, the pain. Cloud9 making the right calls. Just rotating straight off of B. Get three over onto A as quick as possible. But that was just a run and gun fight the entire way, through and through, nonstop action. But for it to be a team flash, and that's how Stewie spots him out. If that team flash doesn't happen, so we might get the kill there. Unbelievable. The finest of margins here in these rounds. But Tyloo can breathe a sigh of relief. That's it. They managed to get on the board here and pick up a round. 9-13. Full buy for Tyloo with the AKs. And there is the AWP still present here on Skadoodle. Pretty, ba pretty balanced buy, actually, between both of these teams. So, But Cloud9 still, they still kind of go for this, this, this catch-all approach. We saw it uh, on train as well, where they really are believing in like the 3-2 kind of setup. That might come back to bite them if Tyloo decide to hit B site and force though. Yeah, but I, f I feel like Tyloo have tried that a couple of times and it hasn't really worked out at all, which is, which is kind of disappointing. Oh, what kind of smoke is this from somebody? I feel like I haven't seen that too often. Obviously one that he lines up beforehand. So just a wall that lands a bit further up, I believe, by the rock. They actually smoked both sides of the rock with that. Pretty interesting. I managed to get the kill on nothing. Stewie and nothing actually be after his death. Still able to pick up the kill on HC with the Molotov. And Stewie hiding at the edge of the smoke. We saw this earlier from Heroic as well. Can he get the timing down right? Almost shut down. And the Molotov is near as well. Stewie is no longer... Yeah, still a 2 on 3 here. Favoring Cloud9. What is this madness? Shroud alive at Big Stone. And somebody trying to get the access to the site. Ben Tet is the one who's got the bomb, however, and so somebody has to come over here and help out his mate. Ben Tet has a cross out into the open, and they have no utility left to make this easier. And sure enough, shot in the back. Automatic and Shroud, each picking up a kill. And Tai Lu, it was a short-lived joy, Anders. You know, they pick up one round, but just like that, Cloud9 are right back into it. Oh, man. <laughs> That's agony. Just enough damage. The HE Molly combo. Yep. It's slowed down inside of the fire. No fun at all. Ah, this must be the last time out called here by uh, Peacemaker. Yeah, and that, I mean, why not? The problem is Tyloo don't really have any money here, but at least they have, uh, they have the timeout. They are uh, buying a UMP on DD. They are going to buy in this round. All or nothing? Or it's just DD? Uh, what's happening? Where's the rest of the team buying? Oh, not like this. No way. Okay, they're... I guess Didi's gonna be the one. No, no, they no. are. They're just, they're just doing it very slowly. That caught me off for a moment. I was like, this can't be a. This can't possibly be a plan, and it wasn't. Thank God. All right. Um, yeah, they don't want to fight for overtime. They want to. They want to try and see if they can come back right now. I don't think this is a bad choice. I mean, if you're Tyler, it's it's certainly a risk, and they have been having a really hard time getting onto the B bomb site. But once again, they're gonna lose the fight against nothing. He's sticking around, which is way too bold. There's no reason to, but he's gonna pick up three kills. Could have just done with the one. That's gonna strike deep in the heart of Tyloo now. How can you come back in the round two versus four? Tech 9 and the UMP.
Yeah, bold indeed, you're right. A total lack of respect there hanging around after the first kill. That's nothing, though, with the confidence to say it time and time again. Sometimes it comes back to bite you, but in this case, nothing. He can feel like he did his job. Two-man advantage now for Cloud9. And Tyloo, well, they have a minute left to work with. They have the UMP, smoke and flash on Didi. So he's going to have to be the man of the hour here. But the rotation already coming here from Cloud9 towards that A site. They're going to have that extra man in connector. And this is kind of turkey turning into the B site defense where they want to shut it down if it is the push, and then it'll turn into the retake on A if Tyloo decide to wrap over there. So again, Cloud9 kind of covering the bases here. More time literally burned off the clock. Yeah. 35 seconds. Tyloo just... They don't have the equipment to make a breakthrough right now. The only way you turn around like this in your favor is if Cloud9 make a big mistake and don't set up crossfires. And with the bomb down, it is most certainly done. He's got 20 seconds and he's going to be going down to Skadoodle. 15 to 9 here in the map point for Cloud9, who have really stepped it up here in the second half. Their CT side defense looking much better than I was uh, kind of fearing. I, I mm. thought that maybe it would be worse, but they've only lost one round in the second half so that's definitely good news and honestly this this whole plateau situation is is something Tyler needs to find an answer for at some point have they you mean they've plateaued in their yes. strategy they do plateau on the plateau you're right we need to figure this out came to me in a flash Anders Doodle and automatic holding over on the other side. It seems like Tyler have given up on the B idea and instead want to go for A automatic with nice opening kill. Takes a bit of damage, but not too much. And he's going to go for the fight again, making it a double. He's out of bullets, otherwise that would have been way more. Shroud and Skadoodle, and that's the end. 16-9 in favor of Cloud9 as they take out Tyloo on Cobblestone. Keeping the hopes alive. It looked a little scary there at the start on this map. Started to wonder a little bit if Cloud9 were going to get ejected out of the tournament without picking up a single map, but no. They show their resolve, yeah. some true grit, and managed to come back in the second half. Very clean work from Cloud9, and really, I mean, a key round for Skadoodle, obviously, towards the end. But nothing, yeah. his moments, everybody seems to be stepping up on Cloud9. A frustrating loss, though, and a frustrating weekend here for Tyloo. Not even weekend! We haven't even made it there! Two days! Yeah, definitely very frustrating. Um, I mean, I, l I look forward to the breakdown. I, I would have, I'd like to hear the analysts' uh, just conversation about what could have been done differently. We are going to go to a break, and then we'll be right back.
Pay Safeguard post match breakdown. It looked like CS go to Asia may very well be a hashtag frequent on Twitter in the next 10 or so minutes. Unfortunately, not to be in the second half for the Tyloo fans out there and, of course, for Peacemaker on his new adventure as a coach. Lots to be talked about. I've got, fortunately, Freiburg and Sponge as minds I can pick. And this is going to be a lot of fun because Cloud9 do continue. They will still be present at ESL on Cologne. Tyloo, unfortunately, are added to the pile. We do see them joining Virtus Pro. Two teams already eliminated in the group stage. 15th, if you will, as they are going to be eliminated. But still, perhaps some signs of light at the end of the tunnel. We'll find out what Chad has to say. Opening thoughts. Let's focus on that first half where we did get to see some degree of a, of a real competition. I guess, first of all, that's the expected result. So we're not shocked by this no. one in any means. But the shocking thing was the way that Tyloo started. They actually looked really good. They were very assertive in the way that they were approaching the game making all their frags. Ben Ted, ag again, you know, he was having a lot of impact, even though a lot of them were probably ecos. Um, he's still getting the frags. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. Uh, people say that it's not, you know, when you're, you're padding your stats, but you have to win those rounds too, right? Eco Cobras. Yeah. Um, and, and then they did try to do a B-long control where they uh, smoked off the entrance. They threw a Molotov, but this, the stack behind the box with the AWP from Skiddle, they pushed up, and it looked a bit sloppy from my perspective anyway, and mm -hmm. they got picked off, and then from there, the, the Cloud9 ball kind of got back into it. They stabilized, showed their skill, and were able to find picks across the board and uh, punish Tai Lu. Punish Tai Lu. Cloud9 really kind of, especially in that second half, really showing what they're capable of. Skadoodle is a name that's perhaps at the tip of your tongue, Adam. Yeah, I mean, I think you played great even yesterday against uh, Na'Vi, but now, I mean, the the last round in the first half, the, the 4K did, and even like the yeah. last guy for, for Shroud, which was on low HP already, uh, managing to, to win the round for them. And I mean, it just kind of shows, I think uh, Skadoodle is a player that when he gets comfortable, when he gets, you know, in the zone, we can really see him now hitting amazing shots. And uh, I mean, that, that round was, uh, that was amazing. Um, so I think I think Cloud9 is still. I mean, they're they're in the tournament still. Uh, they're probably gonna play uh, another team. I guess they're one two now. One two. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think I mean it's still their their life is on the, uh, the last line or what to say. But uh, I still see great CS from them. They've had tough games. They've had a uh, NIP which is yeah. looking great and uh, also lost against Navi. So yeah. I mean, uh, bring them maybe if they're gonna easier matchup now in the one two match. Uh, we might even see them. Actually going to play it, do, it does get quite exciting when you yeah. see Skadoodle firing on all cylinders because, I mean, you said it before after his train game, right? He's playing 2017 Counter-Strike and uh, perhaps he, showing he, what he's capable of. Yeah, he did have... He still had impact, right? We saw that round that were there and yeah. he was making other frags. It was more like on the CT side, it was the frags were going in the way of the, the four other players, really. Everyone else was making the kills yeah. they needed to and they were leading the charge, especially uh, Jordan. He was at the top of the frag count, I think. So it's good to see everybody being able to do that and, and just yeah. make sure that they're holding their own zones. Out of the two teams now that were 0-2 and now 1-2, Heroic and Cloud9, I think Cloud9 have the better opportunity based off what you were saying about the results they've had so far. So they have a bigger chance of potentially doing the reverse sweep right. than what I would say Heroic does. It is uh, something we discussed before, but it's one of those very much, uh, what's the word? I don't want to say impossible, but highly unlikely scenarios. Yeah. That reverse sweep in Swiss is just, your competition is only going to get more and more difficult as you battle for that three, magical three in the win column. Now, word on the street is, Stewie has been throwing out some words on social media. We can check in with his tweet. What's he, what's he been spitting? Apparently there is some uh, tweets. Well, there you go, that's cool. You see him shouting. What was he shouting about, though? Um, could be anything. He had a tweet. No, doesn't Could matter. Could be a mystery. Yeah, we, I mean, maybe maybe he had an interview with Stunner as well. You know, a word on the street as he chatted to Stunner. Let's check in with Stewie. That's what I've just tried. Let's jump on in. What's up, guys? I'm here with Stewie2K coming off that victory over Tyloo, 16-9. Congratulations first and foremost. Let's talk about the slow start, though, on T-side. What happened there? I don't know. They just got, like, five Asians. We got two. <laughs> They're just so quick, but but uh, honestly, I was kind of lost on T side, and Tim stepped up a lot for us, and his calls on T side were definitely better than mine this game, and that's why it's so cool to have two different callers who know the game pretty well, because when I call and it doesn't work, Tim can always step up and call. So, so going forward into CT pistol, you guys are able to tie up the game there eight eight. What happens at that point? Um, well, when we win pistol, that's when we get going. So once we won pistol. We got our confidence up, and Tyler's hitting shots, everyone's hitting shots. We're all making plays. We're all doing things well. So once that happens, it's kind of hard to stop us when we have a really strong CT side. Well, you're talking about Scott hitting uh, shots. How big of an impact did he have in this game? Well, you can see this whole tournament, when we're down, 
uh, 2v5s, 2v4s, he's just hitting shots, bringing it back, bringing it into 1v2 scenarios, 1v1s, which is pretty good favoring us when we're down 2v5. So I'm sure everyone's seen that glimpse of 2015 Scott, so hopefully he's coming back. He's coming back. That is indeed true. Well, that does it for us here. Congratulations again, Stu. Catch up with you guys later. 2015 Scar is on his way back. It's a storyline we'll be following as Cloud9 continue to battle for a spot in the playoffs here in Cologne. But outside of that, Tyloo eliminated. We should probably remind everyone of how the current standings do look and, of course, what we have to look forward to coming up as well. Um, already Heroic have played their game. There it is. You can see now that these are the guys in the 2-0 category. <sighs> still, still blows my yeah. mind. But if you, do, I mean, it's the one ones where you do. You're reminded. We've seen space soldiers flexing. Yep. In fact, you'll see them next phase of conceding a game to none other than Mouse Sports uh, G2. Their loss versus NIP. We've already got a lot to discuss when we do get into those matchups. And this is how it has already shaped up today. Another best of one next with the battle of the yellow logos. Space soldiers, Navi. And I'll leave Chad with the final words as to why you should join us after the break. Space soldiers taking on Navi. What do you make of it, Chad? Uh, our breaks are cool. And uh, space soldiers. Uh, on the rise with with the boys from Zentaros and Kallax yeah. having a good impact. I like what I've seen uh, from the, from them as a unit. I know that Adam's been saying their strategic approach is going to catch teams off guard, and that's definitely what's happened so far. And we see if Navi can get a, a favourable map because they've been looking a bit up and down as of late. Up and down indeed. And we're going to go ahead and go up to a break. So here we do. Off we go. Let's, Let's just get take out a of break. here. Space soldiers. Navi's yeah. up next. Yeah. Fucking shit show. Compromising. Be the best and never hold out. Pick your event. Place your bet. No matter who you are or what you're here for, it's our passion that unites us. Betway, for the love of the game. It's what you've been waiting for. These guys are on top of the world. And it's all done. Astralis win it. IEM champion. It's Astralis. They want the trophy and they've got it. NIP.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ESL One Cologne. Two teams down, and now we get to see what Navi and Space Soldiers can deliver, as already they are sitting on that 1-1 one, one sweet spot. No one's going home in this game, but one will be put on death's door, sitting on that very scary two. VP are on that pile already, and we're going to be seeing if Navi are going to be closer after this one. Turkey have already impressed. In fact, their first game, albeit after a trip and a stumble in the second half, but Space Soldiers in good stead. To talk about it, we have Freiburg and we have Sponge. Now, gentlemen, where do you want to start with this one? Do we start with that, well, exceptional break from the boys from Space Soldiers? Not only have they qualified for ESL1 Cologne, they've come into this one all guns blazing and knocked Top Dogs SK on their bottoms. It was a big, uh, big discussion point for, from Adam, especially before the tournament started, about yeah. how Space Soldiers can come in and if they play a very strat-heavy style of Counter-Strike, that they can catch teams off guard. And based off that same thread that we've been running with for a lot of teams, that they have a chance to reinvent themselves and, and present a new face here in Cologne. Mm. And they did exactly that, making sure they didn't choke. That's another thing, you know. That was a very tight game in the end there. It could have gone either way. Their money was actually quite crippled. And they got across that line. So that's a big win for them. To go into the, the second game, which... I'm not going to say they were a favourite, but but to lose that match when they could have been 2-0 against a team who's quite uh, is having a rough time right yeah. now, you know, th that would be more disappointing for them than anything from from day one. Yeah, and you know, we spoke to we saw the interview with Major for, with Stunner over at the MMC where the players are hanging out in Cologne prior to those playoffs, and his words were that of confidence. It was not necessarily a map they wanted to play, rocking cash of all maps. Uh, does this kind of show us, you know, real the future is bright roster? I would like to say so, yeah. I mean, we've been, I've been practicing against them a lot. And, yeah. uh, I mean, I know that they're playing like practice games with the team, and then they're playing FPL, they're playing uh, like deathmatch, they're doing everything. They're, they're playing so much at CS, and it's an upcoming ki up, up, up and coming team. So I think it's a team that this it might be, this could be the brink of like their the breakthrough tournament, right? Uh, we already mm. see them, as I saw, beating SK yesterday. Um, we'll see uh, if they can put up a again, show against Na'Vi tonight. So, so in contrast, actually, this is an interesting one. Uh, just talking about how much Space Soldiers are playing Counter-Strike. In contrast, you know, Guardian recently released a tweet stating that he is going to stop playing any other video game. He's going to put all of his <laughs> you know, this before. mind and soul into, ca into Counter-Strike once again. And, I mean, that raises the question. It, there isn't always necessarily a correlation, right, between the amount of Counter-Strike you play and the success you find. No, and, and I think one of the things is, and Adam can probably attest to this, is you can sometimes play too much Counter-Strike, right? Yep. There can be points where you actually need that release. And the thing is, we love computer games. We so do. our release is still being on a PC. That doesn't mean we should be prosecuted if we want to play H1Z1 or PUBG or Hearthstone, yeah. you know, any really fun games like that. So uh, you need that reset as well. And it keeps you fresh on the computer. It doesn't make everything feel so awkward. I, I know when I used to play other FPS games and then go back to CS, mm. that it actually made my aim sometimes feel a bit more crisp, yeah. which it doesn't really sell up when we're talking I mean, about me. I mean, uh, talking entirely um, from myself, but I mean, a lot of people have kind of agreed with that, the fact that, you know, when you take a holiday 
you know you haven't touched the pc yeah. for a while and then you sit back down and suddenly everything feels like brand yeah. new and your eyes are like what's happening this feels incredible i mean the, have the idea of taking a break benefiting you has that been a discussion you've, you've thought about before yeah i mean it's that i mean over the years you have to get some vacation you have to be off cs as well yeah. i mean it's only not about that it's motivation as well because you're gonna sit inside and you're gonna play like cs maybe 40 50 hours per week and you need motivation you need mm. like you need proper practice you need also, but uh, uh, that's what I like to say. You, p you need to play other games. You need to do other stuff. You can't just sit by your PC. Mm. And I think that's very important because when you're here, it's gonna be fun, right? So you gotta make sure you you're feeling on top. Of even team chemistry, like outside of the game. I mean, go out with the with the team, have a dinner, like enjoy the team as well. Not only focus on the individual. Did that within like a hyperbolic time chamber type thing. They did a boot camp. And then they went to Guardian's wedding, which was kind of like a fun release and yeah, very yeah. good emotions for everyone. The dinner exciting he's talking time. about. And now they're coming here. And yesterday, the trio that you need to be standing out for these guys of Flamey, Guardian, and Old Mate Simple, they stood up in that game versus Cloud9. They were the, I think they were the top fraggers, the three of them. Yeah. And that's what you need. So if they can carry that through to today, there's every chance that this Navi could be on the way back up. But it's still a very rocky road. A rocky road, no doubt. And of course, Simple, one of the players from Na'Vi, is going to be desperate to try and go ahead and get into another grand final. Both ESL ones he has attended. He has managed to make it to the grand final. We'll see if he can make it three in a row. So far, not so great for them, though. But let's bring up the odds. I'm intrigued to know. Well, they've given us one. So a real edge towards Na'Vi, yeah. you know what? I think it should be a bit closer in my eyes. I think at Space Soldiers, after their performance against SK, I'd like to see them, especially um, like Na'Vi, they are shaky, right? I mean, they did put out the big win yesterday against uh, Cloud9 in overtime, and I think I'm hoping that that win in that long overtime will be like a team, like yeah. a bit like, oh, okay, guys, we actually won a very close game, going into the next game with a bit more confidence. So I think this will be a very interesting game. As Shad said before, Space Soldiers, I'm hoping they will be still be playing tactical, not really relying too much on Absolutely. maybe Xantares with I mean, the star of the team. Yep. And I mean, if you look at those scoreboards, it does feel very earnest. And you know, every time I'm, I'm heading on to like HLTV and I'm like scrolling through with Space Soldiers results, that name does tend to be on the very top of that list. And again, he stands 50 frags. This is a, this is a talent. And I think his story is quite interesting, Chad. I'm sure you're familiar with it as well in terms of his reluctance to abandon the Turkish teams. Yeah. And, you know, maybe the language barrier plays a bit of a role there. But uh, he's definitely one of those guys who could have, uh, if he wanted to, pursued the yeah. language and gone elsewhere because he is one of those stars and he's in the new breed right I, I would consider the way that I play Counter-Strike the old breed but these new kids we have Rops we've got Zantares I would say Stewie's definitely part of that new breed as well they are pure CSGO players in my mind right yeah. so they play the game based off of how wh when they first started it's like oh this is this is, C this is CS but right. for me CS is like wall bangs and like you know <laughs> having the crazy deagle from Source yeah. and bunny hopping and all that kind of stuff so that's still hardwired in my old man brain sure. these kids don't have that they've just got this is the game that I know and I'm going to be the best at it's it it's not cluttered with used to be able to do that yeah. it's simply this is how you do, do you that you know how bad it is like when you would have a situation you're like man that sucks like I could have done this and it's like well no not could've. in this game yeah. you know stop okay. being an idiot well, there is definitely discussion to be had at a later date about like the old guard, new guard, and where the differences lie. That's something I'd love to, to talk about further, but right now it's map time. Uh, and Adam, mm -hmm. of course, alongside Chad, will kind of get into this one. Now, what have we seen from them so far? I'm afraid this is a bit of a memory game. We saw, of course, Na'Vi play Train versus yeah, Na'Vi, Na'Vi usually don't want to play Cash. And yeah. I'm guessing that they will, yeah, they burn Cash against uh, Space Oilers, especially Space Oilers beating SK on Cash, of right? I mean, uh, if I were Space Oilers now, I'd probably get to ban Train, the last ban here, Nuke please. Baby. Because Train was the map that Na'Vi, I feel that Na'Vi is the most comfortable on. The They're not, not going to remove it. Not a so map yeah, Na'Vi instantly is going to pick Train. Nuke's not a map that uh, I, I think that Space Soldiers really like, but it's also not one that Na'Vi are too fantastic on either. They've dabbled no. with it a bit yeah. more in recent times, but it's not one of their go-tos. You said yesterday with Train that you felt it's one of the maps that Na'Vi just knows how to play. Yeah, it's their, their go-to map. It's always been. Na'Vi, for me, that's Train, right? So uh, we saw it yesterday. They, they beat Cloud9 in a mm. long, long battle. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that, I mean, they've been playing how many rounds? 66 six rounds on Train Sorry, already. Nuts. So, I mean, they're starting to feel like some new tactics, some old tactics maybe they brought up some like clutch, all the clutch rounds so yeah. train is definitely going to be at the, in, in favor of uh, in favor of Navi and the odds from Betway is starting to get me why <laughs> okay <laughs> perhaps but I mean let's also not forget a team that have proven they do their homework we saw that on their T side of cash and they've just got a fresh 
day, previous day example of, what, 66 rounds of how Train goes for Na'Vi. That's something to consider. I think it sounds like our casters are ready, though, so let's jump on in and enjoy another delightful Counter-Strike treat. Space Soldiers versus Na'Vi, and it's casted by none other than Anderson Samba. Thank you very much, Alex, you spicy, spicy man. I definitely appreciate it. It is um, going to be interesting here on train for... Uh for a bit of a for a bit of a potential win for Navi Space Soldiers, a bit of an unknown quantity, but uh, they are uh, they are looking good. Yeah, they're monsters. I mean, they've already had just a massive upset. Their first day, well, their first day was yesterday. It's not like we're on the third day here; we're only in the second. But they beat SK 16-14. They beat SK. That is a statement right there. That's putting people on notice. Like, by the way, we'll only go ahead and take on one of the very best teams in the world and win. So that's got to get you excited for a match like this. Na'Vi, definitely not your most consistent team that you've been watching lately. Not the best by any stretch. And so I think Space Soldiers, if Na'Vi underestimate them, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. And already it's a trade action on the B site. Brown Halls, and what is that shot from Flamey? Well, that should obviously be illegal. Flamey hitting that kill ridiculously. Major actually turning around and trying to see if he can hunt down Seized. And will at least be successful in that. So now we're back into a three-on-three -three after... An initial spark over towards the B-bomb site. We'll see. Guardian is moving up quite aggressively towards main. Is he going to go and check and find if anyone is there? It seems like it. Uh, this is potentially dangerous. If they attack B just when he's pushed in there, he's going to be quite far away. But now it seems like they've got more or less things stabilized. Very interesting. Yeah, plenty uh, of time left as well. It's not like they're pressed here. It's not like there's 20 seconds left and they're going to have to make a snap decision. They can take their time, walk around the map. 50 seconds left. And... Uh, Things are looking up here for Space Soldiers. They even have that USP on the man himself. Is he going to hit the headshot? There's the little bit of the jiggle peek, and he walks right into it, but somehow Guardian misses the shot, but he gets the fadeaway. What? Right on Santaris as well. Oh, I was looking so good there for a second, but Guardian just had to ruin him. How do you even hit a shot like that? This is unbelievable. <laughs> Kalix is going to be going down. Major. Alone. One versus three. 20 seconds as well. At least he's stolen the USP and he had the grenade. He's going to try and fake it with 15 seconds. That seems like such a mad idea. Surely Navi will be wise to this. Grenade is in and they did actually rotate on the C connector, but he can't fake the bomb any longer. So he just has to plan. He's going to try anyway and gets run over by Guardian. Man, both Flamey and Guardian need to be arrested for what we just saw in this round. Someone bring the Polizei, as they would say in Germany. It is Navi with a 1 0 lead after, I still think, a pretty brave attempt from Space Soldiers. And I really like the restraint after the initial engagement, three on three, they really try to slow it down. Thing is, Anders, Navi are the police. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Where is your argument now? Yeah. <laughs> what do you call when, when, when it's the police that are after you? That's a good question. That's, uh, I mean, right now, that was disgusting. It looked possible for a second until that Zantara shot, and then things just kind of ground to a halt for Space Soldiers. And they go for the Force, that's to be expected. There is a little bit of eco-management going on here, with Engine only investing in the Deagle. So something to go off of, they want to try and manage a little bit that money. Navi using quite a few nades very early on here though, so now they're starting to get a little low on the utility. But a good spread here from Navi. Three on A, two on B, bit of a catch-all, not holding too close. One detail that I do like to see when you're dealing with an anti-eco. Do not want Navi being at risk of running into those pistols close up, the Tech 9s. You want to try and look for the long-range fights. Bit curious is the fact that Navi don't actually have any more grenades. I mean, if around like this, I would I would try and have a Molotov or an HE or something if you're on the Navi side to stop the B-plant. Satara is hitting a kill. That's a big start. Pass got to follow it up, taking down Seized. And now it's a three on three. The bomb is going to go down as well. Almost a follow up kill. Edward very low on health after that. Oh, sorry, simple after that engagement. Major and Centaurus now three versus two. But that M4 on Centaurus is getting me a bit worried. There's one kill. Looking for a second and almost getting the one on Guardian, mm -hmm. who will close out the round in return and make sure Navi can win it. That's expensive, but um, at least they don't give it away. No, and it's good to see that Guardian. He is starting strong here for Navi as well. Usually one of the key players here for the roster, but he's been a little bit on the rocks, a little bit shaky. Ever since Simple joined the roster, it's felt like Guardian's kind of been looking for what is my role? How do I play this? How do I play around Simple? A player who, do, who does actually require quite a bit of space, a lot of room to maneuver. 
But this tournament so far, yesterday, it was one of the most insanely long best of one matches that we've seen. Nobby winning 36 to 34 over Cloud9. But Guardian had a lot of good rounds in that entire match long. He was hitting shots left and right. And so if he can actually get on, uh, on point here early on versus Space Soldiers, things may be looking up for Navi. Can't really call them the Ukrainian roster anymore. They're a bit more of the CIS mix. They've got it all going on, yes, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, it's one of the... One of the fun things about that region, I mean, they all sort of fit in. I think Guardian is the one who's had to put in the work to actually yep. learn Russian at that level, which is pretty cool that he managed to do it. Pass will take a kill there. Dropping seized. And Simple gets the instant refrag. Smokes up and tries to play the edge of the smoke. That's a bit of a mind game, but the boost from Kalix on the other side means he wasn't ready for it. Right now, Space Soldiers, to me, look like just an incredibly fresh team. It's actually just a lot of fun watching them play. Mm -hmm. And um, they haven't even got rifles yet, so we'll see what they can do once they get to that part of the game. They've done some damage here to Na'Vi. They get one more kill, and that would certainly be big. Just in terms of making it expensive for Na'Vi, but again, Guardian pushing A main, or pushing Alley that time. No, it was A-Main. My mistake. Major was over at Alley with the bomb. Guardian just trying to get aggressive, and I like that. You need to try and make some plays here to destabilize Space Soldiers, not let them get comfortable. Major, with the P250 up close, might be able to find some joy here on the B site. He is going to catch one man in the back at least. Just go for it. Commit. He's looking for more information. Not quite going to find it, but he could, co he could collapse back on the A, and yes, he does hit the shot on Flamey. Flamey, the heart attack, realizing that his back was exposed. And he saw the second player, that's why he's dodging and Major is really playing positionally a really good game. And that's going to be, oh, he cancels it for a second, now he has to hold it down. He wasn't sure if the flank was coming in, he does get the bomb plant down. This is just a really big place coming out of Space Soldiers right now. Three kills and a bomb plant in a round where you have absolutely nothing.